Hi there guys, it's Mrs. Langless and today we are coming back to our spider webs that we started working on last week and we are going to be working on some watercolor painting techniques today. So here is what your spider web could look like when you are all finished. Um, let me just remind you where we were last week. So the first thing we did with this project was to talk about a radial design. So a radial design is when you have lines that are radiating out from the center of something. So all the lines in this case are radiating out or moving out from the center of our spider web. You might remember that when we did a snowflake that also was considered a radial design. So we use this idea of radial design to create our drawing and then added the curves to create the web. So once you finish with that step, you then traced your lines with a crayon. Now, from other paintings that we've done in the past and also this year remotely, um, you'll remember that crayon, when you use it on your paper, makes it so that that area cannot absorb paint. So what happens here is it creates almost like a little fence or a barrier so that your paint will stay put if it's in this spot and won't move into the other. Now, of course, if you hold your paper up and there's lots of water on it, it will drip and move into the next one. Or if you use too much water, it could overflow and go over into the next shape. But for the most part, this helps us to control that liquidy, fluid nature of watercolor, which is both the most wonderful thing about watercolor and it's also the most challenging. So today we are going to experiment with some watercolor techniques. Um, and what I wanna first show you is that, you know, when you look at the word watercolor, the main word that begins here is water, right? So that's our main ingredient. Again, water is a fluid, so it kind of moves around wherever it wants to. It's very difficult to control. And in particular, doing a technique that is called wet on wet can be a really fun way to play around with sort of the unpredictability of a fluid like water in watercolor. Okay, so I can't wait. You might remember a project that we've done in the past um, that was called Puddle Flowers, and that is another um, artwork that where we used the wet on wet technique. So for a minute, I want you to think about if you have one wet color and then you add another, what do you think will happen to that spot? If you said that it will mix and create a little bit of a color explosion like you see here, then you'd be right. So here is a work in progress where I've been demonstrating some of these techniques and I'm gonna work on this one in just a little bit. Another technique that we will be working on is called the gravity technique. So we'll actually be picking up our paper and kind of holding it on more of a slant to make the colors flow into a certain area. Now, of course, you can, um, in this painting, just go ahead and color a solid color too, or I should say paint. Okay, and again, if you don't have paints on hand at home, feel free to use whatever coloring materials you want. I just really love to use watercolors on this particular project. So let's get started. What you will need is a container of water and a watercolor brush, a brush with soft bristles like this. And then of course you will need watercolor paints. So here's what mine look like. Um, and in order to um, activate them, you will need to get them wet. That's why water is so important when you are using watercolor paint. All right, so I think I will start right about, let me see, I'm gonna start with some yellow first because it's a nice light color to show you how the wet on wet technique really works. So I'm just gonna get my wet, my, um, yellow really wet and ready to paint with. Um, and then I'm going to come over to, let me make sure that I'm on the camera here. I don't have enough space under this, under this 
set up here. All right, I think I've got it. Now I'm gonna start with this shape right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a lot of yellow and I'm just gonna come back and grab more water so that it's really, really watery. Now check this out. I'm gonna now come back and just grab some red. And when I do, I'm just going to touch this area. Do you see that? So it creates this little bit of a color explosion. Now I'm gonna use the red to kind of paint this half of the artwork. Maybe I'll come back and just grab a little bit more. It creates a little bit of a color explosion when you are working on a wet color that's already there and then you add another one. All right, I'm gonna do that. I love how this is looking. So it sort of looks like a sunset to me right here. So as soon as you get um, one section to where you really like it, stop and move on to the next one. A lot of times what I'll do as an artist is I keep working on it and then I end up not liking it because the colors get really muddy. So this particular area is wet right now. So I'm not going to paint this one right now that's next to it. I'm going to move to another one on my paper that's a little bit further away. This way I can make sure that things won't mix where I don't want them to. All right, I'm gonna do another one. I think this time, let's see, what color do I wanna do? I'll do a green, because I'm noticing I don't have many greens on here. So I'm gonna start out and I'm just gonna paint this little section right here. And I wanna get it nice and wet with water. Um, the, this technique works much better if your colors are really wet. So you do have to work relatively quickly because you don't want your colors you don't want them to dry. So now I'm just gonna take my color along the edge here and you'll notice that it's not mixing as much as the other one did, but watch what I'm gonna do. I'm going to now go back to the green and look at how it spreads out. Isn't that cool? All right, I'm gonna keep on going. So this one is gonna go from green to blue. I think I'm gonna play around with this one a little bit more. So I'm just gonna go right into this section here and you can see now it's starting to kind of uh, mix a little bit more. So that's basically the wet on wet technique. Oh, here, I forgot about this that I could do. So I'm making sure I wash my brush after every color, okay? That's super important for keeping um, your colors from mixing inside the tray. All right, now I'm going to move to a different spot. So this one's wet, this one's also wet, so I'm gonna move um, let's see, I'm gonna move into one of these little guys. So we don't often paint with white in watercolor because the paper itself is white, right? So we can use that to lighten colors versus using um, the white itself. But white can be really fun to play around with, especially in the wet on wet techniques. So I wanna show you, I'm gonna come back and grab just, um, just a little bit of this red violet and just touch. So you can kind of see how it's spreading out. Maybe I'll grab another color now. Maybe, you know, some of this blue and that one. Now I'm just kind of dabbing, kind of touching just lightly to get these colors to sort of mix. All right, that one I like. I'm gonna leave it just like that and move on. Now you might remember that I mentioned the gravity technique. Um, and this can be kind of tricky, especially if you've got a lot of paints that are wet. So I'm gonna have to be super careful about this. So I'm gonna move right over here, okay? And I'm gonna work on what's called the gravity technique in this spot. Um, and I'm gonna start, let's say, hmm, I think I'll start with a blue violet. And I'm going to actually use my fingers to kind of bend the paper up so it's lifting. Um, and when it does, the paint wants to drip this way because of the gravity. So I'm sort of just lifting it up. And you can see how it kind of pulls up along that edge. That is what you want. Now I'm just going to just go back and get water. And I'm gonna to continue to bring that down. Maybe now I'll add in another color. I'm gonna use that red violet and it just brings down the color. 
I love it. So it give, you get this kind of gradual fading that happens here, which is so wonderful. Some of you might remember using this. Um, we used it on trees um, in the past. I think my third graders are the ones who worked on that. So, all right, look at how gorgeous that is. So that's the gravity technique where you're just kind of lifting up your paper a little bit, okay? Um, and what you, what in this project, what you do is you're basically treating each one of these spots as, as its own separate painting, okay? Everyone using a different color combination, um, and again, practicing those different techniques, which by the way, I think it might be time to just straight up paint one, right? So I'm gonna come back and use, let's see, I'm gonna use this color. It's sort of a um, blue green here. And I'm gonna just paint it solid. And so I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna get more paint. Remember, more water, the color will be light or lighter. Less water, more paint, your color is going to be darker or brighter. So continue painting each spot until you are all finished with your painting. And then it's going to end up looking like that example I showed you back in the beginning. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy and experiment with some different techniques with watercolor paints, and I will see you guys next week.